Hi, everybody. This is Dan Sullivan, and this is our next episode of Exponential Wisdom. I feel in introducing Peter today that I'm welcoming back an explorer who's just gone into a realm and come back and actually went to tropical climbs, you know, and actually investigated something new and actually got involved very deeply with it. So, Peter, we're going to talk about stem cells and your recent visit to a cutting-edge stem cell center in Panama. Yeah. So let me give the context here. You know, Dan, that we share a common desire to live a long and healthy life, and it's not enough to get to age 100 demented. It's getting to age 100 and feeling like you're 60 and having what my dear friend Bob Hurry calls the aesthetics, the cognition, and the mobility at 100 that you had at 60 so that you feel good, look good, think well in that regards. And so that's been, for me, a mission and a fundamental belief since I was in medical school 30 years back. And I remember when I was in medical school hearing about species of sea life, turtles, whales, sharks that lived multi-hundred year lifespans. Sponges, 10,000 years. Yeah, well, <laughs> you can go down to, yes. Yeah. But I'd ask the question, if they can, why can't yeah. we? Yeah, they have something going that we don't. And my answer to that was, it's got to be a hardware or software problem mm -hmm. <laughs> in us humans. And if that's the case, and the engineer in me says, okay, then we can engineer that, we can change that. And so I set a ridiculous goal of 700 year lifespan. And I say it's ridiculous, not because it's not achievable, because if you could achieve it, you could live long enough to live forever. So I think at this point, if we're able to stay alive for the next 50 years, we will have intersected technologies that can keep you alive indefinitely. What Ray Kurzweil, who shares this passion with us, calls reaching longevity escape velocity, the point at which forever you're alive, science is extending your life for more than a year. So mm -hmm. you're indefinitely getting older and better. So three years ago, I joined with Bob Hariri and Craig Venter to start HLI. Let me describe, people know Craig Venter is the guy who sequenced the first human genome, created the first artificial life form. Bob Hariri is a brilliant MD, PhD, Navy fighter pilot. He owns a fleet of jets. He flies himself. He was a neurosurgeon, a brain surgeon. And he realized that as good as he got as a brain surgeon, he could not really repair anything. It was a very grotesque process, uh, not grotesque, looking grotesque, but gross corrections at a level. He had his first child then, and at that time, a thought came to him, which was, you know, you probably have heard you can do surgery on embryos in utero. So if you're having a child and that child in the mother's womb is found to have some kind of atrial ventricular malformation in the heart, you can actually open up the womb, go and do fine surgery on the child to correct that malformation, close up the womb and let the child continue to end term. And when the child is delivered, there are no scars. There's no sign that the surgery ever took place. You've got a normal child. And he said, you know, there is something magical going on in the womb, in the uterus, Long story short, his realization was that the placenta, which is the organ that gives form to the infant, is a factory of stem cells that is allowing a child to be formed. So he started doing the research and he created a company called LifeBank, which has become the largest placental banking facility. They banked some 70,000 placentas along with cord blood. And with the notion that the stem cells inside the placenta could be used as a curative agent. So there are two ends of this process. One end of the process is banking placentas and cord blood and creating these banks. And there are many banks and there's millions and millions and millions of kids who have had their cord blood banked. And the historical purpose for it was if you happen to have as a child a blood cancer you could use your bank stem cells, wipe out your bone marrow, and repopulate your bone marrow with your original DNA, your original software for life. And every year that saves hundreds of lives. But 
the realization is it's far more powerful than that. That, in fact, I banked both of my children's placenta and cord blood with LifeBank, my two boys, and God forbid they should ever need a new heart, liver, lung, kidney. The technology now exists, and it's in the lab, in development. Another friend, Martin Rothblatt, is working on this for lungs and heart, that you could take stem cells and regrow an organ. So eventually all of us will have the ability to regrow a spare set of organs. So what are stem cells? Stem cells are a unique kind of cell that are what's called pluripotent. It can evolve into any kind of a cell, skin, muscle, heart, kidney, liver, bone, whatever it might be. And Bob Hariri is one of the top entrepreneurs and scientists in this area. He's been doing research and what he will show shortly and the data is in, we'll publish it shortly, is that the difference between my five-year-old's stem cell population and your stem cell population, my stem cell population, is that they've got hundreds or thousands of times more stem cells than we do. Also, their stem cells have the original DNA code. As we get older, when we're flying at 48,000 feet, we're being irradiated, when we're in all kinds of environments. We have oxygen-based free radicals. We undergo these genetic changes. So our stem cells at age 50, 60, 70 are not the same as the stem cells we had when we were a child. And they're not as potent. So the analogy is, imagine you had built a beautiful mansion and that mansion had a repairman who could go and repair everything. As the repairman got older, and became senile, they were no longer able to repair things and the mansion started degrading and falling apart. And that's the notion with stem cells. So the question is, can you replenish your stem cells and rejuvenate your regenerative engine of your body? That's the notion. And so what our company, Cellularity, is working on is actually acquiring placental and stem cell banking businesses so that we're able to get the raw materials in and standardize them where every stem cell line is also genetically sequenced so you exactly know what the software code of those stem cells are and then also going and rolling up stem cell clinics around the world where those stem cell clinics rather than using stem cells from someone local that we're producing a high quality stem cell in the United States genetically sequenced and then delivering that to stem cell clinics around the world, so it's standardized, and then collecting data on the impact. Well, first of all, I think that everybody, their ears and brains were wide open to what you're talking about. I think it's a daydream that all people have. I've certainly had it. The whole notion of repairing myself is such a interesting thing. Actually, there was just a little clip in the Wall Street Journal about six weeks ago, and it was called the 120-year-old pill. And the 120-year-old pill is that if you took the pill, you'd be guaranteed to live to 120, but then you'd have to die at 120. So it's <laughs> it's not quite what you're talking about for your 700 goal, but it would cost $10 for the pill. You just have to take it once, and you get to 120. And they said, well, how many people would be for this? And they said, well, for themselves, everybody would raise their hand. But then there's a problem because all of the investment in current technology and medicine and pharmaceuticals would now be totally obsolete and millions of people would be thrown out of work. So there would be... Consequence. Yeah, there would be a very, very severe consequence to the 120-year pill. Well, you're actually proposing something here that goes a step further because there's not a cutoff point with this. What I'm fascinated in finding out more about you, because it seemed to me that what you did in Panama when you went down there was a step further because, as I understood it, the placenta was for the human being who had actually been in the placenta. But you're saying now that there's a way of taking those early cells and actually allowing anyone to use early life cells for their rejuvenation. And that was just a total conceptual breakthrough for me. 
mine is long gone in 1944. <laughs> I mean, if you got the baby alive in 1944, that was the great breakthrough. This was not part of my childhood discussion, what we're having right now. So yeah. this is a break in the story because the second half of what you're going to say here will get people even more excited. Yeah, so let me give you a easy-to-understand example of the fact that stem cells derived from a placenta can be used in anybody. So imagine you have a donor. This is an infertility business, and common friend Stephen Palter is one of the leading thinkers in that area. He's a member of your 10X program, strategic coach. You can have a donor egg, and you can have a donor sperm, and you have a fertilized egg, and you can put it into a donor womb. Right, You mm. can put it into a, a surrogate mother. And that surrogate mother is carrying inside her a living human that has no genetic relationship to her. So it turns out that the stem cells and coming out of the placenta and so forth that are interacting with her don't cause any kind of immune response. So I was down in Panama doing research and looking at acquiring this particular clinic, along with a number of others around the world, along with Bob. I also went down there to get some stem cell injections into my right knee and my left shoulder, which have arthritic issues. And and just to experience it, I didn't go the next step, which I will go next time I go, which is to get a infusion of the stem cells, intravenous infusion into my full body. So it turns out that there are a number of billionaires that I know that go down to this clinic in Panama. And they go there annually to get their infusion of what's called mesenchymal stem cells. These are stem cells derived, in this case, from the umbilical cord itself. Now, for the placenta, there's a separate set of cells that could be derived from placenta, but it's a similar concept. It's just that the placenta is probably a much better source of the stem cells. These guys swear that it has rejuvenated them and has given them much better health. And a number of them are in their mid to late 80s. So that's a fascinating fact. But there's one other important piece of research going on. And then, you know, I've talked about this and I urge anyone listening, go and Google young blood Stanford experiments. And so what's been going on for some time is that It's been known that if you take a mouse that is the equivalent of a 20-year-old human and a mouse that's equivalent of an 80-year-old human, right? A young mouse and an old mouse. And you took the blood out of the young mouse, spun out the cells and just had the plasma. And you injected that plasma into the older mouse and you did that on a routine basis. That the older mouse actually rejuvenates substantially. Increase cognitive function, increase muscular tone, all of their blood markers go back towards a youthful state, and that mouse is able to live at least 30% longer. So those young blood experiments are very powerful, and the way we think about stem cells is a stem cell, this individual cell is a chemical factory Mm -hmm. that when you get a dosage, typically like 120 million stem cells flowing through your body, Those stem cells, which have the original software code of a newborn, are generating all of the growth factors and chemicals that are normal in a newborn state. And so it brings you back to a youthful existence. And instead of taking the plasma injections, these stem cells live in the body for six to nine months. And during that time, they're constantly producing this exudate of these longevity factors, so to speak. And this is, as I understand it, the cells find their way to what's needed most in the body. Is that right? They do. The stem cells, when you inject them into the bloodstream or stem cells in your normal body, are attracted to sites of inflammation. One of the major effects of stem cells is to quiet down inflammation. Inflammation is our enemy That's why we take baby aspirin or Advil, and if you've got reduced inflammation in your body, you are in a healthier state. Mm -hmm. So stem cells are used for people who've got autoimmune disease, rheumatoid arthritis. There's data that's going to be coming out that it can cure rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, even arthritic changes in the body. So there's a large number of applications of these stem cells that are pretty transformative. 
Peter, one thing, you were deep into this before you went down to Panama. Are there one or two things that have, even with the knowledge you had before, have really shifted things since you've come back because you've actually had the experience now? For me, the experience of getting an injection in my shoulder and knee was fairly painless. And I'll see whether, I know for my shoulder's case, I have a bone spur in there and it's not going to repair a bone spur, right? That is a surgical procedure I need to have done eventually. And for my knee, it's quieted down the arthritis that I have in there, but stem cells aren't going to regrow cartilage yet. They will eventually, but not yet. I think the real most powerful implications are going to be the intravenous transfusions on a regular basis to continually try and reset your body. There is another area, and I'm tracking this stuff very closely. There's another company called Unity Biosciences, which Jeff Bezos just recently made a large investment in. And what Unity Biosciences has identified is that it turns out that the body has a mechanism that stops cells from reproducing too many times as a mechanism to put a break on cancer. And so what happens is in your body, you will get these cells that stop reproducing. They're called senescent cells. And those senescent cells are sort of like extra dead weight and are detrimental to your health. So Unity Biosciences is looking to bring to humans a technology that's been demonstrated in mice that if you can remove these senescent end-of-life non-reproductive cells out of the body, in mice you can extend the lifespan 30%. And the goal is to bring that to the market with humans as well. It seems like the other side of the coin in the one that you're getting the body to feel like a newborn again, but you're making sure that the results of aging on certain cells is eliminated too. Yeah, so it's a very interesting process. Peter, fascinating topic. We've often spoken about our respective age goals, yours 700, mine 156, (laughs) and quite frankly, most people find 156 pretty reasonable, but yours is really bizarre. (laughs) It is. I'm going to own it, though. What the hell? So this marks my 30th year since I established my 156 goal, and just to share this with the audience, I can't think of any other number, you know, when I think of my lifetime. You know, I think my lifetime and automatically 156 pops in. And I've noticed after 70, this makes a big deal because I'm observing what's happening to other 70-year-olds who've bought into the conventional message that they're getting close to the departure lounge. (laughs) But the other thing that it has done is that it makes my eyes see different things. It makes my ears see different things, you know. In other words, because extraordinary help is going to have to come into my life from the outside to pull this off. You know, I'm doing everything psychologically to make it possible. I'm totally willing. I'm totally predisposed towards any kind of information, but I'm very, very aware. And I think one of the immediate attractors that I wanted to link up with you is that I knew that you would be a forward scout Certainly for your own reasons and your own purposes, but I would be able to get access to that. And really, I just want to last a long time, Peter. I just, I love what I do and I want to keep expanding what I do. And I am smarter at 72 than I was at 42. And I want to continue the journey. I think that's the big thing is that I've got so many reasons to keep living. I want you to, pal, and I will share everything I know with you. And you know that you have that promise from me. Yeah. I made Anusha Ansari the promise when she backed the X Prize. Originally, I'd get her into space, and I'm very happy to be yeah. able to do that. Yeah. She flew to the space station. And, you know, I put out to my entire client base that instead of yearly, you know, you have parties at the five year, the 10 year mark, I'm not going to do that anymore. But in 2022, I'm having a halftime party. And the halftime party is halfway to 156, so I've invited people to come to my halftime party. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it truly is the most extraordinary time ever to be alive. First time this has been negotiable. First time in human history after hundreds of thousands of years of human development that longevity becomes a negotiable topic and a negotiable reality.
Yeah, and you still can't take it with you. And there's a lot of wealthy people who are willing to invest in the research and the technology. And at the end of the day, it, it will ultimately support everybody because the technology isn't expensive. None of these mm-hmm. technologies I'm seeing are expensive. And there'll be an interesting socioeconomic change that occurs, right? When the retirement age makes no sense anymore, Yes, which doesn't make it sense now. But that's the topic of a, a yet another podcast. Terrific. Peter, very, very exciting as always. I get more comments about your information on the Exponential Wisdom podcast than any other topic of anything else that I'm doing in Strategic Coach. So, <laughs> Well, it's good. I'm glad. We make a great team, and I'm so thankful to have you in my life as my coach and love being part of your 10X family and the amazing people that you have in your life. So I'm grateful to you, pal. Thank you, Peter. Be well. See you next time.